Welcome to the Workplay Podcast, where we deep dive into how to create a visual marketing strategy that actually moves the needle. Take a peek inside the minds of hundreds of Workplay members who have created successful visual campaigns that have generated millions in revenue. I remember there was a moment before I signed up where I was really treating myself like a solopreneur where I was like, oh, I have a personal brand or I have a small business. And it was me and two other people who were on my team. And I had a moment where I asked myself, what if I just went for it? And I went from being a solopreneur to a CEO. What would that look like? Who would I need on my team? And what sort of elements would I need? And I remember that signing up was a signal to my soul that I was going for it. Sarah Jenks, welcome to the Workplace Podcast. Thanks. I'm so happy to be here. You are what I consider a trendsetter, a trailblazer, oh. especially when it comes to how you visually market yourself. And mm-hmm. I want to break down your process of how you actually do that. But first, what is your business and how long have you been in business? Uh, so I am a priestess. I have not been a priestess the whole time I've been an entrepreneur. So I have had a personal brand for 14 and a half years, which is super wild. And I was originally an emotional eating expert. And then I transitioned into life coaching and I found sacred feminine spirituality totally by accident. I was the last person you would ever expect to end up in a ceremony being from outside of Boston. And I, it completely changed my life. So for the past Five years or so, I've had a sacred feminine company and I lead ceremonies every month. We have an amazing spiritual community. I do retreats and programs and I'm writing a book and it's been a wild ride. You are always doing all the things so well. I see you from the outside and I'm like, she is really going for it. Thank you. Something that you do extremely well is market yourself and what you are doing, right? Mm -hmm. It's almost like when I watch your stories, you're connecting with me, the listener, or whoever is watching very quickly. Mm -hmm. It seems so effortless. So were you always like this with your marketing or did you learn that somewhere? Yeah, that's a great question. I feel like I'm a natural connector. I am super empathic, so I can always feel people through social media for better or for worse. My first marketing teacher was Marie Forleo. I started working with Marie back in 2009, which is so wild. And she taught me so much about authentic marketing and connecting with my customers. But it's been a real journey for me because there was a time... And this is really connected to working with you because there was a time in my career where I was obsessed with being relatable and really wanting everyone that I work with to know that we're the same and I get them where they are and my life is also hard and everything. (laughs) But then what started happening was that was holding me back in a lot of ways. And given that I have a company as a priestess, which is a little bit fringy, I had to do a lot of work around letting my freak flag fly. And instead of prioritizing being approachable and relatable, being honest about who I actually am and what my unique soul's expression looks like. And so for a really long time, I was caught in between what it looks like on the outside and what it actually feels like on the inside. And like everybody else, I had all of these insecurities around, are people going to think I'm super weird? Is this too much? Am I doing too much? Is this too much art? Is this too much expression? And after working with you over the past two years, has it been two years? Yeah. (laughs) Wild. You can also, you can really see in, in the progression of our photo shoots, I have really leaned in, especially in our last one, leaned all the way in to to really revealing artistically what it feels like to be me and what it feels like to be in ceremony with me. Not because anyone needs to have a life like that, but just to model, it's okay to reveal who you are. And so 
to have a venue to play with my expression with you has just been such a gift. I hear the word authenticity. I know everyone hears the word authenticity all the time. All the time. Like very generalized. So I love how you break that down. I, I will say though, and especially with members coming through this process, you really have to let your guard down and what you're saying that that sounds very vulnerable to even do that. Not even because I think you have like over a hundred thousand followers now. Yeah. But like, even with someone with 2000 followers, you're, show, you're putting yourself on this stage and you're open to judgment nowadays, like with social media, when you are cutting through the noise, you open yourself to almost like hates and salt culture. And so how do you mentally soothe yourself through that almost like thing that's hovering around you with social media? Yeah, that's all of my work is around understanding our conditioning as women and how our conditioning holds us back. And one of the biggest forms of conditioning that we've received is that everyone is supposed to like us all the time in order for us to be safe. And we have to understand that even just 50 years ago, if we weren't liked by our peer group, it could have been unsafe, right? We, because we couldn't have our own credit card. We couldn't have our own money. If we rocked the boat inside of our marriage, we didn't have the rights that we wanted. If you go back 200 years ago, we could have been thrown out of the house and not have money to eat or drink or any of those things. So we have to understand that it's been wired in us that not being liked makes us feel like we're going to die. But the truth is in this day and age, we're not going to die. We actually are safe to not be liked. It's just uncomfortable. So I just realized at one point, I'm either going to be uncomfortable hiding who I actually am, or I'm going to be uncomfortable because other people aren't going to like what I have. And I definitely hear from people who say, you know, I've been following for 10 years and you're just not relatable anymore. And now you have this amazing life and, you know, you're so successful and I just don't get it and all those things. And it, it sucks because I'm a caring person. I never want anyone to feel bad about who they are because they're comparing their life to mine. And also I'm in the world of, freedom of making your life better, of cultivating joy, of being fully expressed. And so if I'm not doing that, then I'm not doing a very good job. And I try to always show and communicate what it can be like for people and to always encourage people that to know that their life is not going to look like mine because this is my life. My life is mine and your life is yours. And to really think about, well, if this isn't what you want, then what is it? And I think that understanding the conditioning really helps when we're getting over just letting it all out. I think that perfectly leads into what I wanted to ask you next, which is I think with influence, there becomes this level of almost quote unquote copying. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. People because people admire what you do, right? I, I really do think, because I see behind the scenes of, of this, because people come into the workplace method wanting to be like someone else. Mm-hmm. And then that realization of, oh, I have to be me. I'm taking myself everywhere I go. Yeah. Right? yeah. But I, I do think at the core of it, it's like this in, inspiration feeling mm-hmm. that they're getting that you evoke specifically in your visuals. But I do think that there's a difference between copying versus being inspired. So yeah, I'm curious, where do you find your inspiration Mm. or in workplace you? And how do you make that inspiration your own so you're not just another version of someone else? I want to say one thing about copying before I answer your question, because I think it's super important. So what people will often do is they'll think that... My marketing is working because of my colors or because of what I say or because of the drum that I use or because of the set or whatever it is. They think, oh, if I do those material things, then my business will, you know, have the same success as Sarah's. 
but that's not actually why it works. The reason why my marketing works is because it's an expression of my insides and I love it. And if my expression happened to look like Katie Souls, for instance, who's one of my best friends, where we, we have like opposite brands, we could not be closer. If I tried to look like her, no one would buy my stuff because it's a mismatch. And she's so successful because her branding is a expression of her insides. So it has nothing to do with what you're actually seeing on the outside, but what it has to do is the resonance of those visuals with the person who is holding the company. So that's super important. When I go to create my visuals for, for my next shoot, it's sort of a multi-step process. The first thing I will do is I will tune into where I'm at in my journey. And I always ask, what's next for me? What is my next phase? What is my next evolution? And I always use our shoots as a living ceremony for me to step in to an edge for myself because everything that I create has to be for me. It can't just be to make more money or to do a campaign. It has to be sacred and it has to really bring me to my edge. So I am first asking, what is my edge? And then I tune in psychically to my community. What's the community's edge? What are they needing right now? And then where's the connection? And then I just close my eyes and I ask the goddess to show me like a movie. Like, what is, what does this edge look like? Like, what's the art? What are the visuals? What's the thing that I see playing out in front of me? And I do all of that. And then I go to Pinterest and I start searching for some of the visuals that I see in my head and I pull a board together and I send it to you. And that's the process. And then we make it. I'm getting goosebumps because that is everything you just said about copying to the inspiration. That is truly where I want workplace mm -hmm. members to see themselves in this process. Mm -hmm. Good. The best of the best people, the most successful people in this process do it in that way. And I think you articulated it so clearly of what do I want to create? And mm -hmm. what do you see in your mind's eye? And I think something with you that I've noticed specifically with you is that you're not afraid to go over the top. Oh, yeah. I mean, I am a little afraid. I just do it anyway. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Our last shoot that you did with Workplay Branding. So over the top. I mean, we had a whole long table with this huge charcuterie that it was like, the it was epic. The table. You're not afraid to do the thing. And I think that maybe, and I don't know if it comes natural to you. I somewhat relate to that because I am so over the top with the top. Know, any kind of visual. Um, yes. Aesthetic. But I, I do think there's a level of permission when you are thinking visually about what you're wanting to create. And it's like, oh, I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if this is going to work for me. And what if I do this and it doesn't work for me? Mm -hmm. you ever have those thoughts in your head when you're going through this process? Yeah, I totally do. The thing that I experience as resistance the most is, are people going to think I'm too much or are people going to think that I'm weird? Those are just my wounds. And when I really shifted to asking myself, how can I create art? How can I try to show the feeling of what it's like to have a sacred feminine life? Now, do I have huge spreads like that every night for dinner? No, but those are what my parties look like when I have my friends over. And so, and I don't say that blatantly in our shoot, but I want people to get a feeling of how juicy life can feel and offer it as a gift. And one thing that was so fun about our last shoot also was I had, we just, we did a ceremony for the whole day. You know, we did a releasing ceremony. We had people share, we went into the woods, we did all the things. And so you were really capturing real and authentic emotions on the women's faces who came. And it was the best, it was the most successful social media campaign we've ever had. And it was the one where I was not concerned about being relatable at all. And people really resonate. Like our first reel that we posted 
of all of us in black standing around the fire has over a million views now. Oh my God. I know. So oh it's, it, it's working. So what are the elements of a six to seven figure campaign? I know that you've touched on what yeah. you yourself need to embody, but yeah. what do you think is needed from a more tangible perspective in order to execute that? Yeah, that's really great. I really love having consist consistent visuals. So when we do a campaign, it's twofold. We do a free offering and then a paid offering after the free one. And we have one visual like body of work for that campaign. And what that does is it has people get engrossed in our world for whatever campaign we are creating. So for this one was during October, it was over Samhain. The free thing we did was a rebirth ceremony. So we had women in black and women in white for our shoot. And oh, and then we did that fun because Samhain is also called the Witch's New Year. So we did like a fun New Year shot at the end. It was like, those are some of my favorite photos ever. Right. The nuts and bolts of how we do it is we do a three to four week lead up for a free thing. We always do a video trailer to launch it. And I love having the moving visuals. And one thing I did differently when I went into this shoot was I actually storyboarded the video trailer first. And so I knew exactly what shots we needed going into it, where in the past, You've taken B-roll and then I'll like try to sort of put a trailer together, which does work. But this one was, it was actually easier for me in the process because we knew we had all the shots. Then it's just like being really honest about what the program is and who it's for. It's like not rocket science. So much of it is just being unapologetically clear that you're offering something that you think is important for the people who want it. I don't believe in scarcity tactics. This is something that my marketing director, Kelly Tavares, has really helped me with is not speaking to the pain points anymore. So we're really focused in our company around speaking to the, the inspiration and the after and what women are wanting. And that's been super impactful for us. Wow. That's yeah. really, really cool. I also want to say that with the video storyboarding is that we are now offering video power-ups through Jacqueline. I love oh my God, so you. Good. Yeah, so great. to be able so happy. to feel that sort of experience within the process. So. Jacqueline is the best. But she's amazing. Yeah, I mean, she amazing. really knows how to get in there for that. She does. I'm curious because this could seem like a lot of work to someone from the outside looking in. Yeah. How do you keep up with the demand for different and unique visuals in your marketing? How do you keep the ideas flowing and reinventing yourself? I'm still learning my pace in terms of how often I need to do it. This year, what we are experimenting with are two larger campaigns. So like two of the shoots that we'll do together will be about a campaign. And then the other two shoots will be about like the everyday social media, you know, stock life stuff. And I really loved inviting my clients to come and be a part of the shoot. And that's been a great way to really communicate what we do inside of the company. And, and that's, and I love how evergreen your content is. And I think it's because you have a vision when you go into a shoot. I do. Yeah. It's specific. Like, yeah, it's like, this is what we're doing. And then you're mm -hmm. able to pull two years later because mm -hmm. it still holds the same weight. Whereas if you are just sitting in a coffee shop, it's kind of like, oh, yeah, like how many times can you talk about a coffee shop? Like not that many. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Were you ever that person who did that and then went into more of this oh. theme? Yeah. Yeah. Because I was so obsessed with being relatable. So I was like, here's me in a coffee shop. Here's me with my computer. Here's me with a bag. Here's me with my kid. Here's me buying flowers. Because I was trying to be like, oh, this is just me and my... It was more like day in the life stuff. And I think that it's cool to have some of those things, but the marketing that I am focusing on now is evoking a feeling. And those aren't everyday shots of me. I wanted to tell a story. When did that change? And um, what did that change look like? A big shift was when we were in Italy when I was really thinking through, cause we didn't have a big campaign coming up when, but like 
I was in Italy, so obviously you had to come. <laughs> so I remember Kelly and I were sitting at dinner, like eating our 10th bowl of pasta and thinking through like, okay, what do we need, you know, from this shoot? And I thought about, well, we have radiance coming up. And so I wanted to have food, you know, me just like bathing in food. And we did that amazing picnic shot. And I knew that like Sacred Start is a really big part of my company, which is a morning ritual guide that I have. So we got the most amazing Sacred Start shots. But what was so cool is that we really shot like three Sacred Start campaigns. So we got three very different visuals of what it looks like to do a morning ritual. And that was awesome because I could change clothes really quickly. I wasn't doing hair and makeup for those. And we've we've already done two sort of separate campaigns from the summer and it doesn't look like it's the same thing. And so that was really great to switch it up really quickly. So that was a big shift. The thing I want to make sure I say to everybody who's listening is that I remember there was a moment before I signed up where I was really treating myself like a solopreneur where I was like, oh, I have a personal brand or I have a small business. And it was me and two other people who were on my team that were part-time contractors. And I had a moment where I asked myself, what if I just fucking went for it? And if I just went for it and I stopped holding back and I went from being a solopreneur to a CEO of a company, what would that look like? Who would I need on my team? And what sort of elements would I need? And I remember that just signing up was like a signal to my soul that I was going for it. And because when you sign up to do four photo shoots a year, it's a big deal. And it is about turning up the volume on being seen, being heard, and really communicating my message in a bigger way. And so that was a really big shift when you and I started working together. I love that you say that because at the core of the mission and the impact that I want workplace branding to have is is essentially that. Because Mm -hmm. in the online space, there is this almost like underlying energy of solopreneur. I only have right. a team on my team. I only like, I have to do what everyone else is doing. I have to say what everyone else is doing in order to make money. Cause that's what my coach is telling me to do. Right. Mm-hmm. Yep. And when it comes to visuals, there was a huge gap. You can go and spend two grand, four grand, six grand on a photographer for one shoot to get visuals for your whole year. But if you look at all the successful businesses in the world, I like to use the Super Bowl as an example, like uh-huh. all the companies putting commercials on the Super Bowl, right? Yeah. Every single year, they create a storyline. They yeah. evoke an emotion and they're selling the same product. Like Coca-Cola right. has commercials over the Super Bowl every single time. Every single time they're se- they're selling the same Coke product, but it's a different story. It's a different visual and it evokes a different emotion in you every single time. And if online business owners, small business owners, whatever whatever business that you're running, if you were to do that in your visuals through your marketing, you're on a whole different playing field. Totally. It's not even a question. People are all of a sudden are like, whoa, you're treating your business like a full-blown actual company? Who are you? People are attracted to that. So I know that visuals are just one piece of your entire marketing strategy. What are some tools that you have in your toolbox, in your marketing that you use that pair really nicely with your visuals? We use ManyChat. We love it. We do it in-house and we used to work with School of Bots with Natasha, who's amazing. (laughs) She's the best. We do a lot of email marketing. We do a newsletter every week and then a really robust campaign. We have backend funnels and we do Facebook ads. Our Facebook ads campaigns, we use all of your photos and it's been working so great, just like gangbusters. And then we use Jacqueline for all of our videos and that's really all the things that we use. And But I have to say that probably the thing that works the best for us are our backend funnels and Kelly built all of those by herself. And they're just like, going gangbusters for us. 
I know we've had many talks about team, what a good team member can do when in terms of executing yeah. the final vision. I know because you and I were really in conversations when I was hiring Kelly, because I was like, I don't know who I need because we started working together before I hired her. And I decided to go the route of hiring this, like the scariest, it was like the scariest hire of my life because she came from corporate and she deserved a lot. And I needed to become the type of CEO and run the type of company that someone of her caliber was going to want to work for. And so I had to really get it together for like <laughs> the two or three months after I met her. And she has really taken everything to the next level. So it's been such a gift. And it means that I get to priestess and be a visionary and do the creative and do all the storyboarding for our shoots and tune in with the community. But that's like a whole full-time job in and of itself. So it's really nice to share the the marketing and the strategy with somebody else. So beautiful to yeah. like watch that whole evolution and know that you you have her. It's like, it's you can see the difference, I think. Yeah. So I'm going to get a little granular with this one. Okay. What's Great. this workplace branch you prep look like for you? Like yeah. house, you've got three kids, you're building a house. What does that look like? Any tips, any tools, mm -hmm. toolbox? Yeah. So first I map out all the shots that I want to get. And so usually we do what? Seven to 10 sort of different looks and I think about location and vibe and I treat each look like its own thing. And I think about what am I going to use it for? Like, what is this thing for? Then what I do is I order a ton of clothes in my brand colors and I don't always think about each shot. I just order a ton of clothes and then I try on all the clothes, see which ones I like. And then I literally hold my list of shots and I look at the clothes that I have and I just do a big old matching game. And that's how it goes. <laughs> that's so easy. That's the easiest prep I've ever heard. Yeah. My wardrobe is insane now. And it's all because of photo shoes. <laughs> I could probably get better, like Rent the Runway. But I have just like specific brands that I really love. And they, they're not on Rent the Runway. So I just end up buying some like great clothes. But now my wardrobe is like off the hook. It's the best. Yeah. And then you can be like on brand in person. I'm on brand all the time now. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. <laughs> love it. I love it. Okay, so it takes a lot of effort to do this four times a year. I was yeah. thinking, why do you think it's worth it to do it four times a year rather than once every two years or once every year? Like the tradition. Well, yeah, totally. I have to think about how can this be part of my own personal transformation? And so when I'm going through that, four times a year, I'm evolving really rapidly. And you, it just, it has to be for you and for your own expression else it could get tiring for sure. I love what you said earlier about it being art for you and changing it into how can I create art versus I have to do this to sell something. The shift is, is really big. Yeah. It's really big. If you could give work to members one piece of advice mm -hmm. for going through this process, what would it be? Don't put so much pressure on yourself to have each shoot be perfect because you have another one in three months. Just take the pressure off, have fun. Another thing that's really, that I really love is have somebody else there who's gonna like just be with you in the process. It's fun when like when Kelly's there or when Jacqueline's there, when there's like a crew it's like a big fun party. So if you're someone who's nervous, have a friend come and just be there with you during the day. That's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sarah. I so appreciate you coming on and doing this. Where can everyone find you, see the work that you've done with the Workplay Method? Where can people connect? Yes. Yeah, so the best place to connect is on Instagram, Sarah with an H, Jenks, J-E-N-K-S. You'll see all the beautiful photos, or you can go to sarahjenks.com, which is my website. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Lareth. Bye, everybody. Thanks for having me.